Hello everyone, welcome back to another Next.js 13.5 tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how we can create an awesome e-commerce application using Next.js and I will be using Stripe for payment processing and I will be using Stripe APIs to actually process payments to create new products in our Stripe dashboard. So if I go to the products, you will see that there is no current product added in my Stripe dashboard. One way is to add the product directly by clicking on this add product button, but that's not convenient when you have the thousands of products in the real e-commerce application that's why I will be showing you how we can use the different API's of the stripe to do everything for the payment processing for adding the new products and getting the IDs and store those IDs in the products in your database or it can be the data of your products stored in any local JSON file of your project so in this tutorial, I'll start off with creating a new Stripe account and adding a new organization. And then I will be showing you how we can get the different secret keys, different tokens required to connect our application with the Stripe. So this particular application of e-commerce is not a very big project. I know many people don't want to watch hours and hours long crash courses. So I have kept this application pretty small, but it covers all the major features required for building a complete e-commerce application let me show you how it is looking like it is a single page small application and this is the data of my products and I have used Tailwind CSS for building this simple UI for these products and for showing the cart. Okay, so these are the list of products. If I click on add to cart button, you will see that its instance is going to add it over here with the price and the total quantity and the button is going to get grayed out and I can increment and decrement the quantity of that particular product which I want to buy. Okay, you can see that the total amount is also getting calculated and updating over here. I can click on the second product and it is getting over here if I make any product zero it will be removed from the card if let me make it this and you can see that the button is enabled again means that I can add this product in the cart again and for sharing data between these components to this components I have used the context API so in the real application you will be having a different pages for the list of products and for the cart pages and the similar kind of context API that I have used in this project for sharing the data of your application in multiple components so this is the component based structure that I I have created and once we actually add all these products in the card we can click on the buy now and it will be automatically navigated to the stripe page let me show you so you can see that it has calculated the total amount over here and it is showing the complete form of the stripe but if I go to the dashboard now if I refresh this you will see that it will be automatically created in our stripe dashboard and along with the price you can see that the tripod and the GoPro is automatically added over here along with the title and the price and that these products have been added over here as well along with the quantity of each product if I try to add these products again it will not be getting added over here I have added checks in my project that these products with the title name should be added only once so let me go back over here and try to add this bag as well okay and click on the buy now it's $22.96 over here and you can see that the same price is showing over here sometimes it's slightly different because of the taxes and some internal difference of the stripe and here you can see it is added and if I refresh this page you will see that the third product will be added over here as well how convenient is that that we don't need to directly come in the stripe dashboard and create all these products over here so let me show you by processing the payment let's add one of my email ID over here okay and then we can add any card or the cash pay app and I'll be using some dummy data for the card that is provided by Stripe I'm not giving any real card information over here so I can add 4242 and like this and for this I can add 1234 and CVC I can add 123 and here I can write any name over here and uh, I can click on the pay 
and I don't want to save it over here. And if I click on the page, you will see that it is processing and it will be navigated to the order complete page in our application. Obviously, we can build a fancy UI using the Next.js, Tailwind, CSS, but this is about functionality. The tutorial is all about functionality that I want to build over here. And I'm sure that you will definitely learn something new from this video. So before starting creating a new Next.js 13 project, if I come to my YouTube channel, let's go to the playlists and it contains a lot of videos on Next.js 13, JavaScript, React, MongoDB, Node Express, and let me go inside the Next.js 13 tutorials. You can see that it contains 31 videos already and it contains the crash course on Next.js 13, the best practices, theming, connection with the MongoDB, server actions, Redux, context API, CMS integrations using Sanity, debugging Next.js 13, and all the different applications like the protecting routes, complete authentication system in Next.js 13, TypeScript for Next.js 13, building weather application, expense tracker, state management with the stand. So this playlist Next.js 13 contains the video videos on topics that are required to become a good Next.js 13 developer. So guys, you can see that I'm putting a lot of effort building these videos for you guys. It will be really encouraging for me if you subscribe my channel and like this video and it will help me create more videos on my YouTube channel for you guys. So let's get started by creating a new Next.js 13 project. Make sure you have the latest version of Node NPM installed in your system. So I'll be writing npx create next app at latest in vs code terminal and once i'll hit enter i need to give the name of my project to it so let's see we have ecom underscore next js i'll hit enter i'll go with the typescript let's go with the eslint we need the tailwind css let's go with the source directory as well hit enter and no for import alias. I'll hit enter and it will start creating all the files and downloading different node packages required to run our Next.js project. So the project is created. I'm gonna open up the source folder app and I'm gonna open up the page.tsx file and I don't need any of these styles. So I will just be removing everything except the main element. So first of all, I'm going to create few folders. So here I'll start off creating the components folder and inside the components folder, I will be creating few files. One is for the product.tsx, other file is for the cart.tsx and then I can actually create a file for the card context. I'll be using the context API in this file. Okay, these three files have been created. First, let's add a few products over here. R, A, F, E, I'm using the extension of VS Code for the snippets. This has been added. Let's add for the cart as well. So R, A, F, E, this is for the card. I don't need to go into the card context right now. So let's go inside. So this file actually refers to the home route of our application. So I'll be using the JSON data for the products. You can use the data coming from the database, MongoDB, Postgres. I've already created videos on all these different topics on my Next.js 13 tutorials playlist. I'm already working on a long crash course, probably seven to eight hours long. And in that video, I'm building an e-commerce project, including complete authorization, authentication, systems and all the different pages and the proper UI a complete production level projects so let me add the products at the top first in this file which I will be using to render the products using the product component which I have created so I'll start off by writing the products and uh, I can create an interface which I will be creating just now so inside this array I can add different objects so these are the three objects that I have copied you can create as much objects as you want this is an id and this is the name price and then the quantity so let me first go ahead and create a new file within this project and i'm going to name this project uh, name this file typings.d.ts i've already created a long video on learn typescript in next.js 13 you can check out my playlist on next.js so in this typings i will be actually creating an interface and uh, this is going to be a product okay so inside it i will start off writing an id of type string name of type string and we have the price of type string 
and then we have the quantity of type number actually the price is also a number all right so the benefit of using this file is to not to export any of the interface from this file it will be automatically accessible globally in all the files in our project okay so now in here i can actually write the product and array over here so you can see that it is automatically added we don't need to even import that file in this particular component as well okay so now inside my page.tsx file i'm going to render the content of it in my ui okay so here in this main element i will be start of writing the div and inside this div i can have an h1 and uh, inside the h1 i can write any text so let's add the e-commerce card system all right so below this h1 i can write a div and this is going to contain the products which i've created above dot map and then the products and it's going to have an arrow function and inside this i can actually use the product component from the components folder which i have created and inside it i can actually pass the product art id which is actually required all right and then i can pass the product with the key name product okay and inside that component i will be rendering out the content of these products so there is some syntax error so we have this one i need to add another parentheses over here so currently that product does not receiving the product that's why it's giving an error i'll just be fixing it now so before that let's add some classes over here inside this div i'll be writing the flex and the flex colon and then the gap eight all right and uh, for the e-commerce i can write the class name i can make the text a bit bigger so text 3x so the benefit of tailwind that we don't need to create a separate css file all the different classes are available in our components file directly okay so inside this div i can have another class name and i can add the grid grid calls and i can add three over here okay so i will be writing gap four or right over here so now let's go to the product and let's try to receive this product which is coming from that component so product is being received over here if i go to my page.tsx you will see the error is gone and here we can actually render each of the product content over here so first of all i'm going to add different elements inside it so i'll start off with writing the product name so i can write the class name for the h2 and i can make it larger i can make it font semi bold and uh, let's close this up and this is going to take the product dot name okay and then inside this h1 below this h1 i will be having the price so i can write the class name and i can make this gray equals to 400 okay and then i can show the price with the dollar sign before it so product dot price dot two fixed i only want to show two decimal points so i can write the two fixed two okay within the curly braces so let's add a class and the styles to the main div as well so i'll be start writing the border rounded large and then p4 and then shadow medium all right so this is how it's it's working currently and below this price i want to add the button for processing the add to cart functionality so it will first have the on click function currently i'm not writing anything inside it uh, and it's going to be a disabled first of all it it will not be a disabled at the start so i can simply write false to it for now i will be using different variables from the card context to handle all these stuff okay so then i can have the class name to it uh, so first of all let me add the class name to the rounded and then i can write focus outline none 
okay and then i can write the focus ring to focus ring blue 200 and then i can write focus ring offset hyphen 2 all right so these are the default classes i've added to this button i will be modifying these classes based upon if the product is already added in the card or not okay so inside this button i can actually uh, show different text so is product so let's add a boolean for now so question mark i can add added to cart and then i can add add to cart all right so based upon the condition i'll be using the variables coming from this context file to modify this let's run the project first there seems an error over here let's hover over here so it's actually implicitly of type any which we can actually modify so let's add the type to this component actually so i will be writing react.fc and inside this i can write the product props which i have yet to create so above this i can create this interface which is only required over here so i can write the product props and inside it i can write the product and then the product all right now you can see the error is gone and it's not showing any error over here uh so it's it's showing some kind of issues over here so i'll be writing uh this stuff so now the error is gone over here let's go inside the project and uh, i'm going to run this project by running the npm run dev command in my terminal to see that how the ui is looking like on my browser uh so let's see let's go to the browser and uh, here it's already running the old project let me run localhost column 3000 let's hit enter and see what we have over here all right so we have the event handler cannot be passed to the client components all right so in this particular product we actually need to make it client component because we are using on click event okay so let's save it now let's go and now you can see that we have this cool looking ui a heading and the cards for different products currently i have to modify the button uh, let me see why it's not loading up uh, that color so focus ring it's not actually blue so it should be rounded focused outline there should be a colon over here outline none focus ring two and then the focus ring blue it will be a 500 actually i want to make it and i also want to add some paddings and margins as well so i will be writing margin top two and the padding on the x axis should be the four and padding on the y axis should be two let's see if the padding is added or not so now you can see padding is added but there is no background color for this button but for now we are good to go with it we will be modifying these classes later on when we will be fetching the data from the context now let's design the card component so in the card component we need to show the list of all the products added and the total amount and the button to pay the payments okay so first of all i'm gonna come inside here i'll hit enter and uh, i'll start off writing h2 so let's add the class name and uh, this is going to be the text large font semi bold and then i need to add the margin below with the four let's add the text center okay so this is going to be your card or any text you want to add okay in the main div i also want to add some class name so i'll be adding the border i'll be adding the rounded large and then i will be adding the padding of four and then i'll be adding the shadow of to the medium okay so below this h2 i will be checking that if cart exists or not based upon cart exists uh, i can actually show if the cart is empty or not but first i want to show the proper ui with the constant values okay so i will be adding ul okay so in the ul i will start off writing the li first okay so inside this li uh, let's add some class name to the li as well so i'll be writing the flex 
I'll be adding the justify between and then I will be writing the items center let's add some margin as well at the bottom so I will be adding uh, li and then inside it we will be having a div so inside this div let's add the p tag I'll be start writing with the class name and uh, this is going to be the semi bold okay and uh, this is going to show the product name which is not existing currently so I will simply uh, write product one okay like this so we'll be having another p tag for that quantity so I will be giving it a class name with the text gray 400 okay so inside this p tag i actually want to show the price first so dollar and uh, i actually want to fetch the data from the context but first of all 23.09 let's say um, i'll be writing an x after that times and then i would like to show the quantity let's add the four at the moment okay so this is the one item one product listing in the cart page and we can multiply it multiple times so um, i can actually add this li copy this and add it two times okay so it will be added over here but uh, i also want to add the increment and decrement button below this div which i want to add so inside this div it's going to contain a button so let's add the class name it's going to have the flex flex and space x and the two okay so this button is going to uh, actually i wanted to add this class name to the div here okay so inside this button i want to show the minus sign only okay but the button is going to be clickable so let's add the click event let's add it like this for now and then it's going to have a class name it's going to uh, be having a long class name which i'll just be copying from my notes okay so this is the class name which i have added um, i just scroll to the right slowly so you can see what is written over here okay so just like this minus sign we can have the plus button as well so let me just copy this whole button for the plus okay so this is going to be a plus item and the content inside this button and uh, this is going to take the same kind of classes except it will be having a blue background okay so i'll just be replacing it with the blue color so let's save it and also let's try to add it over here as well once i'll be adding and fetching the data from that context i will be adding the dot map function and i'll be removing one of these li it will be automatically iterating through okay so let's add this button over here okay so let's see what we have here all right so it's not showing currently we actually need to add this card component in our page.tsx file so i'll come here below this div and i will be using the card component okay like this let's save it and let's go it has to be a client component as well because we have the on click function inside it so use client let's save it and yes you can see that it's looking great we have products price and these plus minus button it's not doing anything currently below this i also want to design the total amount and the purchase button okay so i'll come down and inside it i would like to add some button so below this li actually the ul i want to add a div and inside this div i will be having a p tag okay so p tag is going to have a total amount colon dollar 
and something like this for now i will be modifying it so let's add a class name to it margin top to four let's add class name to it as well and uh, i would like to give it text large and then the font semi bold okay so let's see what we have all right so this is the total amount visible and uh, below this div i also want to add a button that is going to be of green color clicking on it will be handling the stripe payment process so inside this button it's just going to show the buy now and uh, it's going to have a class plus on click function okay for now let's add an empty on click function and uh, after that it will be having a uh, uh, long classes with some margins and paddings uh, so I'll just be copy pasting it from my notes so this is how it's looking like uh, background is green text is white it's rounded and also I've added this focus hover effects okay all right so let's save it now let's see all right it's looking great we have the total price which is not dynamic yet so i think our ui is completed now um, the one of the main feature of it is handling the states means that which product we have actually added to the cart and how many products needs to be added in the cart and based upon that we will be uh, modifying the total amount over here and also we need to make these add to cart button enable and disable based upon if it is added in this list or not and also i will be incrementing decrementing this quantity uh, and uh, based upon these button clicks all right so now it's time to go to this card context file and start writing the actual logic for the state management data sharing between these two components one is this list of products another one is this card component so open up card context.tsx and in this file i will first start off writing the use client because i'll be using different hooks like use states in it and for that this has to be a client component so i will be start importing few required stuff so i will first import the create context from react and along with that i will be using use context hook as well i'll be using the use state and uh, for the type scripting i need react node as well okay if you don't know anything about the context api i have created a separate video specifically on context api in nextjs 13 in my next 13 tutorials playlist you can learn from that okay so first of all let's create an interface type so i will name it card context type and uh, this is going to take the list of all the cards and uh, this is going to be of type the array of products okay then i will be having the four functions one is add to card remove from card and increment quantity and decrement quantity okay so add to card and this is going to receive the product of type product and the return type will be nothing and we can give the void to it okay so then remove from card okay and then i will be uh, passing the same stuff but rather than passing the product i will be removing it using the product id okay and then i will be uh, giving the value increment quantity product and then the void product id as well for incrementing and then i will be writing the decrement quantity product id and then product return type is void the extension which is helping me suggesting the different code uh, expected code after my cursor is the tab 9 ai assistant uh, you can install it in your vs code so that's pretty much it we need to add in the card context uh, interface okay and uh, then I need to create the context so I'll be writing the const card context equals to and I'll be using the create context function it is going to be of type 
card context type which I have just created and I'm using this function from react to create the context for this and it can be the card context type uh, and uh, it it is it is like it has to be starting from this sign okay and then a default value will be the undefined initially uh, one undefined and also to avoid any kind of error uh, I can give the undefined with the or sign as well okay so below this I need to create uh, this one card provider okay and using this provider I'll be wrapping out my layout file uh, so that all the values all the functions and this card value should be accessible to all the components which we have created so this is going to be of type react and then card provider props I need to create an interface for that so it is going to be an interface I will be writing the card provider props and uh, this is going to take all the children and this is going to be of type react node okay so I'll just copy this and I'll paste it over here all right and this has to be dot fc just like I added in my product component over here all right so then it is going to be equals to this one actually the curly braces and then the arrow function all right so actually if i hover over it uh, it is not assignable to type uh, of this uh, let's try to add some code inside it then i'll be returning uh, different context provider inside it then there will not be any error I believe so let's add a return statement you can see that it is not showing any error currently okay uh, let's add some code inside it first of all I need to create a use state hook uh, to contain all the card stuff so I'll be writing the card set card equals to use state uh, of type product array and the initial value will be the empty array there will be nothing in the card initially okay so the first function that I want to implement is this one add to cart okay so let's implement this function so const add to cart and this is going to take the values product of type product okay so add to cart and then first of all what I need to do is um, I need to find the index of product uh, using an ID so I will be writing an existing product index equals to cart dot find index and uh, inside it I can actually get it with the items arrow function item dot ID and the product dot ID so this variable is going to contain the number for the index of particular product okay and then I will be checking if the product actually exists so I will be using that variable which I have added above if it is not equals to minus one means it is found uh, if it is found I can actually use the const updated card equals to dot 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 card okay so I'm just cloning that array of all the card instance in this variable okay I'm not passing it by reference I'm just cloning it so now I will be using the updated card and then existing product index and uh, I can actually use the quantity plus equals to one okay and the quantity is getting incremented by one and after that I think I can actually use this function set card to add the updated card value so I can write the set card and then the updated card and uh, I would I also like to add an else statement if the product does not exist then I will simply use the spread operator card and then dot 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 product quantity dot one 
okay it has to be three dots if you don't know what is spread operator what are the different variations i've also created a video uh, in my javascript playlist on my channel everything about spread operator using arrays using objects using functions you can learn spread operator from that video of mine okay so i hope that there will not be any error or issue inside it um, so if i save it there seems an error so first of all what i'm gonna do is i'm going to remove this error because i've created this card state variable and i've added this function so first of all i need to export it uh, below so here i'm going to return this i will hit enter and i will be using the card context dot provider okay and th this is going to take a value property and i will be writing the double curly braces i'll be passing the card and i'll be passing the add to card inside it okay so this is going to be the card context and then the provider there seems uh, an error so we have this one add to card and we are returning this we have the provider so this has to be value equals to okay uh, so inside this i will be actually passing the children so children means all the child components because i'll be wrapping this provider in this layout file and this children is being received from uh, the top component so let's go up and uh, here we have the card provider and uh, inside it i will be writing the children because this is where it will be received if i come down you will see that it is not actually uh, throwing an error over here the value is returning some kind of uh, error be it might be because uh, i'm using this type and i need to actually pass all of these functions which i have written over here so let me first add all of these functions so i will be writing remove from card it's going to take the product id of type number okay so just like this uh, i've just copy this paste it and then paste it again and this one is going to be the increment quantity for the product id and then i will be having the decrement quantity uh, for that all right so now i will be passing these functions as well remove from card increment quantity and then the decrement quantity as well okay so we have uh, remove from card function uh, we have this thing uh it's still throwing some error if i hover over it void is not assignable to type uh, this one so first of all we will be implementing it let's try to add something inside it and see if we are able to remove this error so const updated card equals to card dot filter item and the arrow function item dot id equals to actually it's not equals to the product id okay and then i will be setting up the card with the updated card all right so we can ignore this error the comparison is unintentional because the type string and number have no overlap so there will not be any uh, error because of this any runtime error is just the typings error something like that okay javascript will handle it itself okay so now uh, it's still showing some kind of error uh, over here i think what i can do is i first need to export const use card equals to and uh, this is going to be having the return type of the card context type arrow function and like this and then i will be writing the const context equals to use context and then i will be giving passing it the card context and if context equals to undefined then i will be simply throwing an error 
okay so i can write the use card must be used within a card provider otherwise i can simply return the context all right so let's save it and uh, we have this card card provider and then we have this stuff uh, let's go to the top and uh, we have to implement these stuff so increment quantity what is the logic coming in your mind guys so i will be start of mapping through the cart and uh, i will be first uh, checking that uh, item id if it's matching with this product id then i'll simply incrementing the quantity by one okay then i'll be updating the state using this function all right so let's come over here i will first create a variable updated card equals to card dot map and then i will be writing an item so it is going to be item dot id equals to product id and question mark i will be using the spread operator item dot uh, actually item comma and then the quantity which is the property inside it uh, this is going to be item dot quantity plus one all right and after this i will be simply giving it the item after that so this stuff all right i think i need to let's remove these curly braces we don't need it here and we can ignore this over here it will be automatically handled and once that is done we can set the cart with the updated cart all right and uh, just like this we have done it for the increment quantity i will just be copying and pasting it for the decrement quantity let's dry run the logic that we have here so card dot map item and we have item dot id question mark and then quantity uh, this is going to be greater than zero because there are few more things we need to do over here we want to decrement it as well as we want to remove it from the cart as well okay so i will be writing item dot quantity if it is greater than zero then question mark item dot quantity minus one e colon zero okay so this is the ternary operator within a term ternary operator i hope that you have got an idea this is just a javascript syntax that i have written and uh, after that we are just updating this with the set card function for this states all right so let me see why it's showing this error so let's go to the top and uh, we have uh, this function these three function are taking these numbers so okay so here i have given the type product over here for the product id as well i need to change it to number here for all of these three function let's save it and uh, let's come down all right it is fixed now and uh, these are the errors that we can also fix so we can actually since this is a number this id is a string in our type we can add the to string function over here if we want so let me copy this and there is no error in this file all right so let's save it i think we are pretty much done we have this decrement uh, quantity function we have this and now one thing we need to do is we need to go to the layout dot tsx file and we need to wrap all of this children around that context provider which we have created and we have named it card provider actually so let's go up so this is the card provider using which we need to wrap so first of all i'm going to wrap it with the div okay let's save it and now 
I need to wrap it with the card provider which I have just created. All right, so I will just cut it from here. Now what will happen is this children is being passed to this context provider and uh, this is getting over here. It means that all of these functions including this card data is available to all the child components uh, which are being passed over here in next year 13 as you know that we have these all of the child components all of the routes go through this layout file the main layout file all right so now let's save it and we are done with this card context now we need to modify these products first of all so i'm gonna go here first of all product.tsx and uh, i need to actually use all of those functions and the data so first of all i need to import the use card use card from the card context and then using this use card i can actually fetch the function so in this particular component i need one function one is the add to cart and then i have this data and i can use the use cart function to get this data use cart all right so and i can actually add this to our here when the button is getting clicked i want to update the card data by calling this add to card function so i can pass the product uh, from there and uh, we have this product dot price we have this add to cart button and then we need to make the button disabled and for that uh, i need to check if the cart contains anything inside it related to that product or not Okay, so I can actually create a variable is product in cart equals to cart dot sum. Sum is going to check if even at least one item exists in the cart or not. So I can use the arrow function item dot id equals to product dot id. Okay, and then I can use this particular variable inside this disabled. All right and then as i said that we can also use it over here add to card it's actually card here okay if the it exists then i will be changing the button text to add to card and then add it to the card okay and now i need to change the classes from blue to gray uh, so first of all i'm going to update this class so let me copy it from my notes so i'll just be explaining you what i have written over here all right so we are using the is product in cart variable if the this particular product is in the cart then uh, we are making the background color gray for that particular button okay and the cursor not allowed means that uh, a cursor pointer is will not work okay and then if the product is not added in the cart it will be having a background color of blue and the rest of stuff is as it is as before okay so for this particular file i think we are pretty much done so let's save it and uh, let's go and now you can see that it is blue and it is gray currently it will not show anything over here because we have not managed this and uh, this has been added in the cart let's refresh uh, because we are using context and context is uh, uh, currently it's not managing the state when we refresh the page because we are not using the real database for that okay so here we can use the local storage session storage to handle which products are added in the cart or not so let's go ahead and uh, i'm gonna first check if we need to do anything over here in the page.tsx uh, related to cart so i don't think we need to do anything over here we have these products already added we don't need this image so i will just be closing this up and uh, i will just be closing this product as well because we don't need to add anything inside it now the main file the cart.tsx in this particular component i need to actually use uh, these functions for the cart context this one 
the remove from cart uh, increment quantity and then the decrement quantity okay so first of all in this cart component i will be importing that stuff so let's open a product one i will just be copying this import file the line okay and then i need to actually use that particular function so i need the cart i need increment quantity decrement and remove from cart from the use cart uh, function which we have created in the context okay so now first of all we actually want to figure out the uh, the total amount so i will be writing the total amount equals to cart dot reduce and this is going to take up the total and then the product arrow function i will be finding out the total plus product dot price multiply product dot quantity okay this is the formula uh, that is simple javascript which i have written for finding the total amount from the card based upon the all the products and the each products quantity by multiplying it with the price okay so after the total amount i actually want to handle the uh, increment and the decrement stuff uh, but first of all let's go down and uh, here i need to check the cart length first for showing the error message okay so below this one i want to add the cart dot length if it is equals to zero question mark these parentheses and then inside it i can simply write your card is empty okay and uh, after that i can add an another parentheses and inside it i can actually add this whole stuff that i have written below okay first of all i'm going to remove the second li tag it's just confusing me i don't want that let's remove that and uh, i want to move everything this ul inside here okay there should not be any syntax error i believe yes there is no okay so let's see now you can see that your card is empty because in our context there is no product added over here so inside it for listing down all the cards added i need to use the card dot map function to actually iterate through this all li elements so i will be coming over here so i'll be writing card dot map and then i will be writing the product arrow function and this parentheses okay so let's add this li inside this map okay so there seems an error here what is that so we have this cart dot map and then the product uh, and then we have this arrow function let's save it so let's see what we have here missing key prop all right there is no syntax error i need to add the key over here so i will be writing key product dot id okay so now we have this product one i need to fetch it from the product dot name and then i have this one so first of all i want to have this price so i can write the product dot price dot two fixed and then two i only want to show two decimal points after the dot so then i have to have this product dot quantity okay uh, all right so now what we have here we have these buttons uh, so inside it i will be handling it like this so i will be uh, calling that decrement function we have here okay so i'll just be copying it decrement and uh, i'll be passing product dot id to it and for the increment i will be passing the increment quantity and i'll be passing the product dot id inside it all right 
so first of all let me verify if it's working fine so let's go ahead let's refresh add to cart and yes it's working pretty well it is grayed out and uh, add to cart and the tripod is added as well let's try to increment it if it works fine let's increment yes it's getting incremented it's getting incremented let's try to decrement and it is getting decremented as well so if i go below zero it's not getting removed from here this is something i need to see uh, why is it not getting uh, removed from here so rather than actually decrementing the quantity i'll be writing another function inside it uh, so for that i will be writing const handle decrement equals to product id of type number arrow function so i will be calling the decrement quantity with from that context over here so decrement quantity i'll be passing the product id like this and after this this is where i will be removing it from that card uh, i'll be checking if it's getting equal to zero so i'll be writing the product equals to the card dot find and then i will be writing the item dot product arrow function item dot id equal equals to product id all right so after that i can write the product and product dot quantity equals to zero like this if it is equals to zero then i will be calling remove from card function i'll be passing the product id okay so rather than calling the function in our button i will be calling this particular function which i have just written over here okay so let's save it and uh, i'll be using this total amount just now but just to verify over here so let's add this one increment zero and yes it's getting removed from here uh, so let's refresh again it's getting refreshed now let's use this total amount uh, below so here i will be using that total amount variable over here so i will be writing total amount dot two fixed and then two okay so for this button uh, I actually need to call some function and uh, this is something related to stripe I'll be passing some data to this function uh, which I don't want to do yet let's verify if it's getting added so I will be adding this add to cart uh, this is getting increased to $67 let's remove it it's getting updated as well you can see that so let's remove it let's Oh, it's getting zero here all right so on the zero i want to remove this item but if i click on it it's getting removed when it is less than zero this is something i need to see over here so we have uh, this function which is actually product and product quantity equals to zero and then remove from card uh, let's go to this function decrement quantity in the context and see what we have to do over here we have this one uh, it is getting let's try to dry run this logic equals to two string and then the item and uh, in the item we have the quantity greater than zero and then one and then i'm simply updating this updated card actually what i think i need to do is I need to filter out if the item quantity is greater than zero so i can write the filtered card equals to updated card dot filter item arrow function and then the item dot quantity is greater than zero okay and rather than adding the updated card i'll be passing the filtered card over here okay so let's see now what we have here so let's refresh and uh, add to cart add to cart 
increment increment and then the decrement gopro and if i click on it i want this complete row to be removed and this add to it to cart button should be enabled again okay so that was a problem uh this is fixed and uh, over front end functionality for the ui is working pretty well and uh, what i want to do final thing on the front end is that i don't want to show this buy now button and the total amount button if the card is actually empty okay i don't want to click on the buy now so let's add this check over here for the card and uh, this is the button okay so i can simply write the card dot length if it is equals to zero then i'll be simply writing and 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 uh, this is going to be added in that parentheses like this all right so now uh, let's refresh okay so button is removed actually i want to add this to the top like this okay so there seems uh, an error the syntax error uh, actually i need to wrap it within this so let's add it over here there has to be only one element within these parentheses all right so it should work fine now you can see the whole amount and the buy now button is not visible anymore if i refresh and now add to cart it's added the products are added add to cart add to cart uh, price is getting updated and uh, let's try to remove the tripod now and uh, yes tripod is removed and we can add that product again and uh, this is the total amount and now the most important part of this video is to handle the payments using stripe i'll be clicking on this buy now button and uh, i will be calling a function and i'll be creating a api route handler within this next js app and that api route handler will be handling adding these products in the stripe dashboard and passing the data for the payments and then we from there we can actually process the payments but first of all i'm going to create a function over here let's name this function checkout okay this is not created yet so i will come to the top and here i can actually write the checkout function equals to this is going to be an async equals to and like this all right so there should not be any error over here now all right there is no error i will not be writing anything inside it first of all i need to create an api route handler in next.js and uh, but before that i want to give an overview how we can create a new account on stripe how we can add an organization how we can get the secret keys client keys whatever is required and use those secret key client keys uh, in our next js project so let's see what we have in the stripe dashboard so you need to open up stripe.com on your browser and click on this sign in button at the top nav bar and uh, after that you need to create a new account in this if you already have you can sign in but i can click on this sign up link at the bottom okay and here i will be giving my email id full name uh, your country and i will be giving it a password which i just need to create so i filled the form and i have created my account and uh, i need to verify my account first of all by going to my email id let me verify that so i have verified my email id and currently at the top you can see that we are in the test mode we need to activate our account but during development it's always a good practice to go with the test mode we are not live and we are not actually building a real e-commerce application yet okay so from here i can click on this api keys for developers and uh, it will show me this publishable key and secret key I will not be revealing my secret key you can copy yours in your notes because we will be using this secret key to access this stripe account to create and edit the products and also process the payments in our next.js application
so i have copied my secret key and let's go to the products from the top and currently you can see there are no products added we can add the products as i showed you at the start of this video directly from here but this is not a good practice in case you have a lot of products in your database okay so we'll be creating the products directly using uh, next.js project using the stripe apis okay so now we are done with the configuration and we have copied the secret key let's go to the next.js project now so in the project what you need to do first is create dot env file in your project folder and in this env file you can name anything to it stripe secret equals to and after this you can paste that secret key that you have just copied from stripe dashboard so i copied my secret key in dot env file and i've closed that file now so it can be protected now i'll be creating an api request with the method post so in next.js we have to create a folder inside the app directory i've already created different videos and i have used this api directory and created different api routes you can check out my next.js 13 crash course series and in that series i have already explained about different versions of all the api route handlers in next.js so here first of all i'll be creating a new folder checkout and i can name anything to it so our api route will be like localhost colon 3000 slash checkout okay so i'll hit enter and inside this checkout we have to create a file route.ts we cannot change its name it has to be route.ts okay so inside it i'll be returning the response to my front end next.js application using this syntax as suggested by next.js okay next response will be used and after this i can actually use the stripe from the stripe but first of all i need to install my stripe package using npm so in the terminal i'll be writing npm install stripe i'll hit enter so it is getting installed uh, while it's getting installed i can use stripe equals to require stripe and after stripe i need to provide the process dot env dot stripe underscore secret okay which i have added uh, here in my env file okay so this has been added what it's showing so it's asking it like this let's add so actually it's not import it has to be the const here okay all right so now in order to create the post request i need to export it export const post and it has to be an async function request of type any and then the arrow function all right so inside it uh, i can receive the products coming from the front end um, and i'll be using fetch function to pass the data from front end application i can use axios as well so i will be receiving the data like this so i can destructure it products from the front end and i can get a wait request dot json okay and from the products i can have the data of type product which i have created in typings file this is the typescript which i'm using so products all right so this is how we can fetch the data from front end and for now let me return something empty below so return next response and here i can return dot json and here i can simply return the url to it okay so session is will be used by that stripe function so this is simply is going to work but first of all what i want to do is i want to verify if my stripe configuration is working fine using this stripe secret which i copied from that dashboard and for that i will simply be using fetch function uh, let me see what we have here actually it is a list function so and to get the data if we are able to get the data from the dashboard it means that we have successfully configured our stripe in our next.js project so here i can actually write const prods equals to and uh, i can write await stripe dot products dot list okay and after that i will be just console logging 
it to see if products are being fetched or not from the dashboard so let's quickly use this api call in our front end so in our card system this is where we added the checkout and uh, in this checkout we will be um, actually uh, calling that so i will be using await fetch and this is going to be http localhost colon 3000 slash api slash checkout and after that since it is a post request i need to pass it a method equals to post and then i need to give it some kind of headers and headers would be content type equals to application slash json okay so after the header i need to pass the body json dot stringify and this is going to be the products and then the cart okay cart contains the list of all the products cards as you know coming from that context file which we have imported over here okay so this is the data is being passed to that and uh, now i can use the then response like this and it is going to return the response.json from here okay and then i will be writing the then response again arrow function so it is going to be like this so in this response i can simply log the response this is going to be the url okay so using this response if response dot url this is what i am actually passing from that api i will be simply navigating my web app to the success page that i showed you at the start of the video or the cancel page if in any case the payment process is not successfully processed or we are simply canceling over buying process okay so for now i will simply be like returning this stuff okay so for now i will be actually calling this api and i want to actually see these products in my terminal okay so i'm running my project now in my terminal let's go to the browser and let's refresh this stuff first of all let's try to manually add a product i will be removing it just now so i can click on the add product i can click on the a b c d description standard pricing i can add 23.00 usd one time payment uh, i don't need to add the description here so let's click on the save product so one product is added in our dashboard all right so now i will be adding this one and i can click on the buy now and see what happens so i have clicked on buy now let's see what we have here so it's showing an error on this url actually i have added 300 it has to be the 3000 over here okay so let's save it and uh, let's refresh let's add to car let's click on the buy now and uh, i'm gonna go over here and here you can see that it is actually being fetched and this is the name of the product that we added in our dashboard it means that we have successfully configured the stripe in our um, stripe dashboard and we have successfully copied the secret key as well because using the secret key we are able to access the data over here so i have verified first of all i will just be going to the dashboard and i will be removing that product this was just for verifying so delete product from here all right so it has been deleted i want to create these products using the apis rather than manually adding it okay so now uh, in this post request first of all i will be using different functions so if i can go to the documentation uh, at the top you can see that we have the api for creating a product retrieving a product updating so creating a product we have uh, this api uh, just like uh, this uh, products dot list we have the products dot create over here okay so in my route first of all let's try to remove this thing we have got the products in the data and uh, i will first create a separate function because i will be needing these uh, list of code multiple times in this below post request so i can write the get active products 
okay if i show you the output in the terminal we have this active property where is that active true so in the dashboard terminal we have the different archive that we have all available we only want to fetch the active products okay so this is where i'll be filtering out the activated products using this function so at async this one and uh, i will be writing the check products equals to await stripe dot products dot list okay so first of all i need to get the updated products from the stripe dashboard and after this i need to get the available products await uh, i can use the checked products dot data dot filter and inside the filter i can write the product of type any arrow function product dot active equals to true okay so this is going to work i think let's save it it's looking like this now and after that i can return the available products wherever we need that okay now we are only fetching the active products the available products from the stripe dashboard so here i'm actually going to fetch that active products uh, from that function so await get active products that function is an async and i need that uh, await keyword to fetch the data that's why i made that async and whenever the async is the function we need to use again the await keyword to fetch the data this is the javascript concept i've created videos on that uh, in javascript playlist as well as in the node express mongodb playlist difference between callback promises and async await okay so after this i need to create the products in my dashboard first before processing the payments so for creating the products uh, first of all i will be using the try catch block so there is no error let's add the catch block here as well so in the try block first of all i'll be iterating through uh, this data products which is being passed from the front end i have not actually verified that yet so we can actually verify it as well uh, once we write our logic over here so const product of data okay because this is the data coming from the front end uh, from the cart component so inside it first of all i need to uh, check uh, that uh, so the logic which i'm trying to create is once the product is created with the name gopro or a tripod or a wallet that product should not be created again okay if it's already created that i don't want to create that product again it is not related to the payment process yet it's about adding the products in the stripe dashboard so if one product is already created let's say that there are multiple users trying to buying a product from your website then all of those users are trying to buy the one product then we don't want though that one product to be created again and again it's just the database we are creating in our stripe dashboard okay so first of all i will be checking const stripe product equals to active products uh, dot find and uh, here i can actually use the stripe product of type any arrow function and then stripe product question mark dot name question mark and uh, there is a chance that uh, the uh, the product name which is coming from that front end and the product name which is on the stripe dashboard is not a case sensitive so we need to check it by um, adding it to the lower case so i'll use javascript lower case function to lower case and then product dot name dot to lowercase all right uh, this is called optional chaining this is to avoid any kind of undefined errors in some cases there might be a chance that the product is undefined then name is going to throw an error and it can crash the application okay so now we have actually checked uh, by this find function if there is a stripe product exists or not then we can actually use if stripe 
product is equals to undefined means that it is not already existing in the stripe database okay on our account okay if it is not existing then we will be creating a new product so i can write const prod and i can use a weight stripe dot products and it is giving us a create function which is the built-in function if you go through the documentation of stripe you will see that this is the function exists and inside it we need to provide it a name and it could be the product dot name which is coming from the front end and then we need to provide the price for that so default uh, underscore price underscore data and this exists in the documentation let me verify that so here we can see that more parameters this is the parameter these are the main parameters name which we have already used and uh, we can have this default price data we have the further child uh, properties default price data and then we have the currency that we can use uh, we can use all these different options as well so first of all i will be giving it a unit price which is also a unit amount actually so this is going to be the product dot price which is coming from the front end and i need to multiply it by 100 because we want to convert the dollar price into cents this is what supported by the stripe and they recommend to use cents for that and then i will be using the currency and currency is the usd okay so then this is pretty much it i believe and then i can actually log that out console dot error uh, this is going to be an error error in creating a new product okay and i can actually throw the error as well so throw error all right so now before actually start processing the payment let me verify if the products are being created in the stripe dashboard or not so the project is running let's go to this stripe dashboard let me refresh this to verify if there are any products already existing or not already so here you can see that there are no products available and here uh, we can actually try adding different products so here we have uh, the quantity doesn't matter currently quantity will be matter when we will be start buying these products uh, this is just for the reference so I can click on the buy now these two products should be added uh, already so buy now uh, is added and here let me refresh and it should be creating over here all right so this is working perfectly our tripod and GoPro are added in our stripe dashboard let me refresh and try to add tripod and bag now now the tripod is already existing it should not be duplicated again okay but the bag does not exist in the stripe dashboard this is what i want to test so by now you can see that this api is how quickly adding the products so now i'm going to refresh this page and let's see that all of these three products exist over here or not all right so now three products are added we don't need to add it manually and all these products are available and all these products means these are active now whenever anybody try to buy any product which are already added uh, then it will not be added again this has to be added only once and the price which we have stored from the front end card page is also getting added over here let me show you if i go to the page.tsx these are the prices of uh, these three products okay so we have actually added the product successfully now it's time to uh, go over here and start the payment process so after we are done with creating the new products uh, we actually have to uh, get the updated products first from that uh, stripe function which we have created okay let me close it so i will be simply fetching the products again so let's add that so these are the active products don't use the let because we want to update the variable with the updated products we have got the updated products now i'm going to create a new variable 
stripe items and this is going to be of type any you can give it the type as well um, in the type script and now i'm going to iterate through the data again like this okay because i want to construct the stripe item the stripe expects two properties for each product be the id of this product and the quantity of these products so we are actually constructing an object an array of object that we will be passing to the stripe session the checkout session for the stripe okay uh, if i go to the bag you will see that its id is automatically generated over here okay so now i need to construct this array of objects that will be having the price and the quantity and in stripe price refers to the id of that product it's not the actual price okay the id of the product refers to the price and then the quantity will be automatically fetched so for and uh, inside it i will be using the same stuff so i'll just be copying this logic here okay let me verify so we have the active products from here and then we have this uh, stripe product we got that and uh, let me change the name so so we don't con get confused so prod dot name dot lowercase and prod dot name dot to lowercase all right so we have actually found this stripe product now and if the stripe product exists <coughs> then we are actually uh, creating an array of objects so stripe items dot push this is going to be an object and this is going to be a price and as i've told you that the price is referring to the id and the id gets stored in this particular key the default price you can see over here all right so i can actually fetch that from the uh, that uh, stripe product which we have added over here so stripe product question mark dot default underscore price which is the key and then we need to pass the quantity okay so it can be this quantity is not stored in the database yet it is coming from the front end so we can fetch it from this product object so product question mark dot quantity okay so we have actually constructed this array all right and uh, now outside this loop we can actually create the stripe session and we are pretty much done with this file this is the last thing we need to do so i'm going to add the session equals to the await i can write the stripe dot checkout dot sessions dot create okay so this is going to get different properties so line items refers to the stripe items that i have created and i need to provide the mod mod can be the payment it can be the subscription if we want to add the subscription based payment monthly yearly we can add the uh, such kind of mod so currently i'm going to add the payment mod over here and after that i need to provide the success url and uh, this success url will be my local routes in my next.js application which i have yet to create but uh, before that let's add uh, at local host colon 3000 let's add the success route for that okay and then uh, cancel url okay and this is going to be the cancel for that i have yet to create that so let's create that new folder we have the success folder and then we have the cancel folder make sure you match the name of it because in next yes as you know we have to um, add it like this okay so we have the cancel and we have the success inside the success uh, we can create uh, different pages so uh, for the success i will be creating a new file so this is what's happening so page.tsx and uh, in this file i will be creating this particular text only so order completed with this simple tailwind css and its name is success okay and then in the cancel i will be also creating the page.tsx 
and uh, I will be pasting for the order cancelled over here. So this is for the cancel. So our routes are automatically generated with the route names success and the cancel. All right. So this has been done. Now one thing we need to do here rather than passing this empty string, we need to return the session dot URL. Okay which will be get from this session. All right. So let's save it now uh, in the terminal. It's getting saved. And one last thing we need to do in the card.ts here, we are actually calling that API. And this is where it is actually returning the URL. And using this URL, we can actually navigate application to the success URL or the cancel URL. We don't need to check that. We just need to check if the URL exists or not. Okay, so if URL exists, we can use any Next.js router property or we can use the JavaScript Windows property as well. So window dot location uh, and then I can write href URL dot response or whatever you can use dot assign function as well. Let's see if it works. So I'm just going to save it and let's see we have this e-commerce simple application so we have added this let's increment the quantity for it it's getting incremented let's increment that so we have two products with six and two quantity total amount is 45 dollars pretty much so let's click on the buy now let's see if we are navigated to that all right so it's getting navigated it's working fine all right so we are successfully navigated to this page pretty well and so let's test that i've added my email id let's add 4242 something like that and 1234 this is just the fake information i can add the name i can add the country and let's see if i click on the pay it is just a test mode it's not a real payment okay and i should be navigated to the success page which i have created so let's create that click on the pay it's actually processing no thanks uh, so let's see all right order completed and we are successfully navigated to the order completed page all right so let's navigate back to our application this one and uh, i want to add all of these three i want to check the cancel page as well click on the buy now we can add the loader as well uh, so let's see we have 183 uh, showing up over here let's click on the back and see what happens so click on back and it automatically triggered the cancel so we are navigated to the order cancel page in our next.js application all right so we are pretty much done with our basic e-commerce web app using next.js and the stripe and we can expand our application with navbar footer and just to let you know guys i'm already working on a long crash course that i will be building an e-commerce application that will be having a complete authorization authentication system navbar footer different pages like about us contact us page list of products searching the products filtering the products pagination of that products and i'll be using the real database which will be the mongodb i'll be using the prisma orm and I'll be using the stripe again and for the product CMS I will be using the strappy headless CMS for that so there are so many things I have using that it will take around a month I'm already working on that and that tutorial will be around seven to eight hours video and just to show you that stripe dashboard is so big we can generate reports billing see the different customers and you can see that i just bought one thing with the name umair mirza and this is the default payment method that i added and we can see the payments over here this is the payment we have received and thank you so much for watching this video if you want me to create more videos it will be really helpful it will be really encouraging for me if you subscribe my channel and like this video see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching